that used to be a, uh, I mean a perception, uh, I, I fought that perception for I think over a decade. Uh, but I wasn't apologetic about it. I, th that was the path that I chose. I, I loved the fact that, you know, cinema was a, a, a large-scale medium and that opulence is something that I liked. You know, fashion is something I enjoyed. And being slightly over the top or far from the real zone was something that I believed in and I wanted to pull it off with my own personal conviction. So, you know, today, of course, one has to adapt to the syntax of the times. But at that point, I was like this, this, this boy who walked into the movie business with big dreamy eyes and uh, grown up on the works of Yash Chopra, the opulence of Raj Kapoor, the grandeur of their films and their vision. And I was very happy to emulate that vision and create my own zone along with their, their I would say, their reverential memory. And that's what I think I did. And uh, I, as I said, I, I'm very proud of the work I did even in that zone. And I continue to kind of feel that it's the important thing is to adapt to the time. So today, of course, maybe a Kabhi Kushi Kabhi Gam would not be able to be pulled off with that kind of conviction because the times have changed. And had I to do the same thing, I think there would be a large part of today's film Sinego uh, generation that wouldn't be able to identify. But those are the same people that still look back at that film on satellite when it does come and enjoys it for its vintage value, I think. You know, actually the thing is, um, honestly, um, when Karan and I actually met Karan through his dad and uh, Sri Devi because um, I was uh, designing for a film called Gumra, which his father was producing and that's when I met Karan. Um, I think that um, when Kuch Kuch Jota was, you know, Kuch Kuch Jota uh, started, it was like our film, you know, like all of us, whether it was Shah Rukh or Kajol, that it never even occurred to me that, uh, you know, Karan's now becoming the director. There was such happiness among all of us. And uh, I think till date, I mean, I don't, um, uh, I think for me, Karan's film is like my film, it's like my production, and I, it never really, um, and I think like how I would, uh, if I was producing that film, I would make sure that I'm on time, and uh, that everything is done correctly, and likewise, I, uh, when it's Karan's film, I just make sure that everything is correct. So it's never that, um, you know, and of course, I think for any relationship uh, which is personal, and to last out professionally, it's really important that, um, at your work, you don't get your personal equations. So it's not that when Karan's taking a shot, I'm going to just, you know, backslap him and say, hey, you know what, that happened last night. Because he's doing something really important. At that. So you've got to respect that. And I think, um, I don't know, I, I've never really understood why people say good friends can't work together. And I think Karan and me are an example. It's almost 20 years. And um, I mean, Karan's film starting now. We're all going to be in London for a long time. I'm actually looking forward to it and uh, yeah so it's like it's like my film starting so i don't think of um, any kind of pressure no i completely endorse what he said i think with, when manish does the clothes on my film like i'm completely stress free i think he and i have a complete understanding you know i think i completely respect his talent his vision and his his extreme amount of hard work that he puts into every even one single costume manish will give it a deep amount of thought and I respect the fact that he's still so passionate after being in the business for nearly 25 years he's still so passionate about every garment that he puts out there and to me that really really strikes a chord on an emotional level and working with him is like working with family I mean like Manish and I have a complete understanding even when we when we kind of sit and jam on something I mean I trust him completely because he's more than being a fashion friendly uh, a working entity, he's also passionate about Hindi cinema and I think it's the synergy of the two that really makes him the man he is. This year you have been awarded with this, uh, Manish Manoto, you have been awarded with the most glamorous designer and you have been awarded with the most stylish director, glamorous director. So what was your feeling and what do you think about this collaboration where fashion has been appreciated at a much more higher level? Well, it's always important to platform fashion. It's a multi-billion dollar business worldwide. And I think that, you know, there's a certain perception sometimes, which is changing now completely, that fashion is frivolous. No, it's actually, a, as I said, a multi-billion dollar business in the world. And it's growing phenomenally today, even in our country. Manish is the leading mainstream designer of the country and, and the world and his 
to the point that when I produced a film called uh, Humpty Sharma Ki Dulanya, there was a dialogue where we needed a leading designer name where she says, Lehenga penugi to sirf Manish Malhotra ki penugi varna nahi karungi shadi. Uh, and the, he was the brand that the director wrote without any interference from me. And when I read that dialogue, I realized his reach is that large that if you go to even a small town or you go to uh, a city that is not in the forefront of things, they will tell you that if you mention fashion designer, the recall is Manish Malhotra. So fashion is definitely on the map today and proudly so. As far as the award, I think it's great that Filmfare has started this platform. Winning the most glamorous filmmaker is of course, um, uh, it's both, uh, I would say, <laughs> a very extremely um, uh, gratifying to know that you know someone thinks you're glamorous partially embarrassing as well because glamorous can be uh, I think such a subjective term in so many levels but definitely if somebody else had won it and not me I would have been very upset so uh, w winning is very critical and, and winning any award for me is critical be it glamour be it director I don't like to lose if I'm nominated with five other names I'd like to win Karan sir, please allow me to ask that what's your current status of the most awaited project two of your project uh, Ram Lakhan and Shuddhi please uh, they are both awaited by us also. Uh, <laughs> uh, we are also awaiting it. Uh, Shuddhi should uh, we definitely go on the floors very soon. Uh, the pre-production on that film is a, a, a tumultuous task because it's, um, it's a very widespread film with a large scale, so it needs a lot of time. And Karan Malhotra, the director of the film, is releasing Brothers in August, so he'll get into it right after that. Ram Lakhan should start early 2016. Rohit Shetty is all set. As soon as he finishes his already announced film, Dilwale, we we will a in the next two months announce the cast and just to go on record and say the film has not been cast because every morning I open some newspaper or read some online news that suggests a new cast for Ram Lakhan. Eventually I think I will be playing Ram and Rohit will be playing Lakhan uh, uh, if, uh, because that's the way it's going. Every day there's a new information about that film. So I always say till we go on record, till Rohit and I don't go on record, that film hasn't been cast. But it's very, it's all set to start 2016, early 2016. But I think the best thing about Shuddhi and Ram Lakhan is that they haven't even been casted, but they are the most uh, written about films, I think, in the last one year. Yeah, yeah, well. And the most awaited. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, talking about style and glamour, obviously, your look in Bombay Velvet has been, you know, everybody has been talking about it. It's extremely smart. So, who really styled you and tell us more about it? What really went into putting um, it on? I, I had nothing to do with the styling of that film. I had nothing to do with that film at all, actually. I just reported as an actor and I forgot that I was a filmmaker or, or had any perception or any point of view. It was styled by Niharika and uh, it was uh, conceptualized by Anurag uh, in tandem with Neharika. Uh, they wanted me to look very different for myself and, uh, and it's also a film based in the 60s so it had to have a certain retro element in its styling. But the character is, is uh, partially flamboyant so there is a certain usage of color and, and within the, which I don't normally wear. I wear a lot of black and I've worn all kinds of colors and I just kept my mouth shut because I felt as an actor I can't have a perspective. I have to follow the vision of the filmmaker because that's what I want out of actors myself. So if I start throwing my own tantrum on the side, it won't go. Uh, and Anurag is something you can't throw a tantrum with because he has a very clear vision. Uh, I'm really nervous about it because it's, uh, it's my first foray into film acting and uh, uh, I'm just really stressed out about how it's going to be accepted when it's out. Uh, recently, the CBFC, uh, another film called Unfreedom has been banned by the CBFC saying it's got too much of uh, homosexual content and it can't really, you know, uh, go on the big screen. So as a filmmaker, <coughs> do you think banning is an option or, you know, like, is it justified? Uh, I don't think banning anything is, is something that I endorse. I also feel we've been in very detailed and very productive talks with the authorities to be on censorship. I do believe very strongly there should be certification, not censorship. And it's something that I actually have been trying to suggest for a while, just the, like the British Film Board uh, of Certification has like a 12, a PG, a 15, an 18. Uh, we all hope that perhaps we can, and the right people are handling the situation, so I wouldn't want to comment while the process is still on. I just have to say that the industry, the fraternity have come together uh, to kind of resolve the, the crisis that that seems to surround this particular issue and I hope very soon that we will have an amicable solution to it all. I just want to know in today's time, do, uh, do you think which hero or heroine is perfect in fashion or style? 
uh, who I think is the most stylish, I definitely think that Sonam is a game changer when it comes to red carpet fashion. I do believe that she should be given that credit completely uh, because I think she, j she just she revolutionized the concept of red carpet fashion and she started the ball rolling and everyone rolled along. Uh, so I definitely think she pioneered that um, and also there was a sudden burst of stylists and I know she housed a few of them and Rhea, her sister, is uh, definitely a large part of that uh, process as well so she should be given due credit for it as well. I would say Sonam is definitely one of the most fashionable women in the business. When it comes to fashion iconic in general, I don't think there's anyone better than Mr. Bachchan. I think you can give him anything to wear and he carries it off with the aplomb that I don't think any other individual has. Manish has styled him on two of the films that I've directed with him and he would endorse that, I'm sure, that you, from giving him the bright red coat to a fur coat to a, um, a like a, anything overtly opulent to something completely simple and basic he can pull off almost anything and pull it off with the fashion of a legend for more bollywood updates subscribe now to youtube.com/biscuittv